video effects have properties, and you can adjust those properties to change how your videos look. You use a variety of controls to make adjustments to those properties, and I'm going to go over those controls in this lesson. So go to Working Files, go to Projects, and then open up 0904 Effect Properties. We're going to work on this clip here in the top of these two clips, as I've shown you before. The clip covers up what's below it, but you can see what's below it are these clouds. And we're going to eventually make those clouds visible here and there. What I want to do is start talking about the various ways that you can control the properties inside effects. We'll start off by going with the fixed effects. So I've selected this to make it active. Give the effect controls panel open. Let me just open up the disclosure triangle here for motion. Inside motion, you see various properties. Now, if you want to change a property, that'll change how this effect behaves. I want to change the position, for example. If I just click on the number that makes it blue, I can type in something besides 960. I type in, let's say, 800, and press Enter or Tab or Return, and that'll make the change. And by putting it 800, I slid it over to the left a little bit. I can change the property using the Scrubby tool. If I hover over it, I get a little Scrubby tool, and I can drag it left and right, up and down, whatever, to change that value. Notice that up and down, left and right doesn't change the way the image moves, just changes the way the number works, and the number working here happens to move the image up and down, so we can move that guy like that. Some properties have sliders. If I click on this little disclosure triangle, there's a slider, so I can slide the scale up and down here between 0 and 100%. The thing is, though, you can go beyond 100. If I go over to here, I can take my scrubby tool and scrub to the right past 100, all the way up to 600 if I want to. Now, if I want to scrub fast, I hold on the shift key, and that'll go really fast. If I want to scrub slow with more detail, hold on the controller, the command key, and it goes much slower. I'm scrubbing at the same rate I did before with my mouse, but the controller, the command key, makes it more fine-tuned. The shift key makes it go really fast like that. Okay? If I want to type in something, maybe I can go beyond 600. I'll type in 1,000, see what happens. Nope, just stops at 600. So the sliders can be helpful. But sometimes the numbers here don't accurately represent what you can really do if you start going beyond the edges of the sliders there. Let me just reduce the scale so you can see it down here a little bit, something less than 100%. Some of the controls have little circles on them, like rotation. If I want to rotate this thing, if I pull it to the right, it'll go to 90 degrees pretty much and then stop. I'm just pulling it right, go left, it'll go that way. But I can swirl it around like this. And notice that it says 2x, 3x, 4x. Every time I go around, it adds another x means that I rotated it five times plus 31.6 degrees. If I click on here, I can just say five times and make this zero for the second part there. So now I've rotated it five times, but what difference does it make? It just sits there, right? Nothing's going to really happen. But I can keyframe that. So if I just turn on keyframes, it'll rotate five times. If I go back to the beginning and set this to zero, there you go. Now it'll rotate five times between the beginning and the end. There you go. Let me get rid of those keyframes by clicking on them, pressing delete. Click on this, press delete. I'm going to reset everything here by clicking on this to get everything back to neutral. It adds another keyframe. When I do that, I need to turn that off. There we go. I'll turn off keyframes for rotation. Some effects have drop down lists. Let me close motion here for a second. Go to opacity. Here's a drop down list for the blending mode. Click on that. These are the various things you can select. Let's go to hard light. Now, what we're doing here is we're blending this clip on top with the clip below it. Let's see how that looks. Pretty cool, huh? You just can't keyframe a blending mode. You select it, and it lives for the duration of that clip. Sometimes you need to work with a clip on another track, and there's a drop-down list that will help you with that. Let me go over here to the effects and look up the track mat key. There's a track mat key. I drag it over to this clip. If I make it active, I see that the track mat key says, where is the mat? The mat needs to be on some track, and the only track that's available is track 3. But there's no clip here that I can use as a mat. Well, I'm going to add a clip here just to show you that works. I'll add this piano clip, which is a smaller frame size. So it shrinks this guy down now that they're working together. But I really want to use the notes on here so you can see them. So I'm going to go back here and change this from matte alpha. It's looking for edges of it to matte luma. And now it's looking for black and white things like the notes. I'll click on this guy to make it active. I'm going to change its scale so you can see how this works. I'm going to turn off the uniform scale. I'm going to drag this to the right like that, expand it over to the right, drag this to the right too to make it taller. There you go. And now you can see how these clips blend together because I told this clip to use this thing as what's called a mat. And mats are kind of confusing, but I'll be talking about mats in an upcoming lesson. There you go. Combine the two things together. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this clip on top now. 
and I'm going to go down to here and delete the track mat key. There are a few other control options that you run into. Let's go back here and switch this thing off by clicking the reset for that, and we'll go back to normal. You're going to see these little boxes with the circles in the corner. That means there's some kind of control point associated with this effect. If I click on it, there are the control points. For motion, it's this anchor point here and these eight handles. If I click on any one of the handles, I can just drag it in like that. Another handle like so. If I want to move it around, I don't have to drag on this little guy. That just says that's the anchor point. That just shows you where the anchor point is. And the anchor point is the thing around which the clip will scale or rotate. There are some other effects that have these little controllers. I'm going to go down here to the effects panel and type in crop and add the crop effect to this clip. There we go. Notice that crop has those little four guys too. I'm going to take this thing back to full screen by resetting it. I'm going to click on motion. Those are the motion handles and the anchor point. But now I'm going to click on crop and see if you see any difference. What's different? Motion has an anchor point. Crop does not. When I click on crop, I can now drag these handles. And that will actually change the pixels that we're seeing. We're cropping them away. There you go, like that. And there is no anchor point here. I can't drag it around. But I switch over to motion. That's the whole size of the original clip. This is just the cropped version here. And now I can drag it around. So crop has one of those control points too. You just need to be careful that you're not moving motion when you think you're moving crop or vice versa. Let me remove crop here by deleting it. There's another effect that has those control points. It's kind of a fun effect. I'm going to reset motion here to get that back to normal. Type in lightning here. Lightning. Just drag this over or just double click to add it to this clip. Lightning has one of those guys. If I click on it, it has two control points, a start point and an end point. If I click on one of them, I'll drag it around and notice how the start point numbers change as I move it around. That's the start point. I can move it off screen like that. I can have the end point, let's say, end on top of this cactus. I guess that's the Joshua tree. Anyway, right on top of that cactus there. Then we can watch this thing animate. Lightning animates automatically. But there are all kinds of ways that you can control lightning, including moving this ending point. So as the camera moves along here, we could have this ending point stay with the Joshua tree or whatever we want. We can change the size of the lightning strikes, the branch width, for example, make it really thick. So let me delete lightning here. There's another kind of controller that you're going to run across occasionally. Let me go down here and type in camera. This thing called camera view. I'll drag that over. Some effects have this little setup box here. If you click on that, it opens up this little setup dialog box. It's called camera view settings in this case. This is an older effect, and some older effects have these little setup boxes. They're almost useless, basically, I'm sorry to say. But Adobe doesn't want to get rid of these things because people are used to working with them if they work with Premiere Pro for a long time. But if I go to the camera view settings and I change things, like adjust stuff like that and like that, you'd think you'd start seeing it showing up here. But no such luck, folks. It's too bad. I'm going to say OK, and those guys will change over here now suddenly, and then it shows up over here, and now I can maybe change things like this if I want to, in terms of how this thing behaves, like so. There we go. But the thing that's important about that little setup box is this background. When you work with camera view, you get this solid color background. You can change the color here. Clicking on that, let's say we'll change it to something pretty obvious. But you may not want to have a solid color background. You may want to see what's below this clip inside the sequence. And so how do you do that? There's no option here to turn this little guy off. But in fact, there is an option. It's just tucked away here inside the setup box. You would probably never think to go there. It would be nice if they had a checkbox here for it, but they don't. So I'm going to click on this. Over here, there's a thing called Fill Alpha Channel. By default, your alpha channel is filled with a solid color. Alpha is normally the transparent part of a clip. I'm going to not fill it by unchecking it, clicking OK, and that guy goes away. And now we can see the clip below it. So that little setup box is important for that one little checkbox for camera view. I'll show you one more here, levels. If you've worked with Photoshop, you've probably seen levels before. I'll just add that one by double clicking it. And it too has this little setup box. Open that up. And that should be a nice histogram with all kinds of little peaks and valleys here. But the histogram just, just does not work here inside Premiere Pro, unfortunately. You can make some adjustments here. And the adjustments do show up here, which is nice as you make these adjustments. At least you can sort of see your work in advance despite the fact that it's kind of a thumbnail size thing here. When you click OK, then they come back here, and then you can adjust things here as well. 
But the thing is, the levels effect has been superseded by the fast color corrector and the three-way color corrector, so we won't be working with the levels effect. But I do want to let you know that if you do run across this little box, that's called the setup box, and that's how you get to it. So those are all the various kind of controls that you're going to encounter when you work with the effects inside Premiere Pro. We're going to work with keyframes in the next lesson.